myself as well as most of my viewers like if joe biden wins i don't think any of us are expecting like structural change or systematic reforms that would actually meaningfully change this country for the better but at a minimum i think most of us assume that he's going to handle COVID 19 at least better than donald trump i mean you can't really do a worse job than donald trump unless you try like donald trump has fumbled this in a way that's comical like we've handled COVID 19 in a way that a failed state would have handled COVID-19. Like, we are doing worse than any other developed country for the most part. And it's just, it's shocking to me. But now, as the polls kind of tilt more towards Donald Trump's favor, as Joe Biden starts to lose ground against Trump in key battle states, I'm questioning, okay, if Trump is reelected, worst case scenario, what can we expect with regard to COVID if we have the same child handling COVID-19? And we have a new story that tells us we can expect the worst case scenario where we deal with COVID-19 probably for another four years unless it just like organically goes away. Because the strategy that Donald Trump is already looking at, it's a disaster. So as Yasmin Abutalib and Josh Dossi of the Washington Post report, one of President Trump's top medical advisors is urging the White House to embrace a controversial herd immunity strategy to combat the pandemic, which would entail allowing the coronavirus to spread through most of the population to quickly build resistance to the virus while taking steps to protect those in nursing homes and other vulnerable populations, according to five people familiar with the discussions. The administration has already begun to implement some policies along these lines, according to current and former officials, as well as experts particularly with regard to testing. The approach's chief proponent is Scott Atlas, a neuroradiologist from Stanford's conservative Hoover Institution who joined the White House earlier this month as a pandemic advisor. He has advocated that the United States adopt the model Sweden has used to respond to the virus outbreak, according to these officials, which relies on lifting restrictions so the healthy can build up immunity to the disease rather than limiting social and business interactions to prevent the virus from spreading. Sweden's handling of the pandemic has been heavily criticized by public health officials and infectious disease experts as reckless. The country has among the highest infection and death rates in the world. It also hasn't escaped the deep economic problems resulting from the pandemic. But Sweden's approach has gained support among some conservatives who argue that social distancing restrictions are crushing the economy and infringing on people's liberties. That this approach approach is even being discussed inside the White House is drawing concern from experts inside and outside the government who note that a herd immunity strategy could lead to the country suffering hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of lost lives. The administration faces pretty serious hurdles in making this argument. One is a lot of people will die, even if you can protect people in nursing homes, said Paul Romer, a professor at New York University who won the Nobel Prize in economics in 2018. Once it's out in the community, we've seen over and over again, it ends up spreading everywhere. So, I mean, after reading this, uh, we can expect... Four more years of COVID-19 if we get four more years of Donald Trump because he's going to handle this in the most irresponsible way possible because he thinks that if we just pretend like this isn't a thing, if we opt for the herd immunity strategy, well then, I mean, at least the economy will be saved, right? But except if you're going to copy Sweden, understand that they still didn't save their economy. Like, that's very obvious, right? You can't just choose between sacrificing, you know, the economy and people. Like, this isn't a real choice. That's a false dichotomy. Like, you don't get to choose to save the economy by sacrificing people because if you end up sacrificing people, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to save the economy. But, I mean, it's worth it to take the chance if you're Donald Trump because that makes you look better. And, look, if we're going to copy anything from Sweden, why aren't we copying their healthcare system? Like, we copied the worst elements about other countries, but never the best elements. And from what I've understood, herd immunity might not even be a possibility because people who get infected with the virus are susceptible to reinfection if their bodies don't produce a sizable enough antibody response. We don't know yet because information is, you know, still scarce and we're learning more and more. So that might not even be a thing. Like, people might not be able to just build up an, an immunity. Like, we might actually need uh, a vaccine, we might actually need to make sure we social distance and we don't reopen the economy. We stay home as much as possible until it just goes away.
But of course, it doesn't matter. Like, whatever is the most reckless strategy, that's what Donald Trump is going to pursue. So the fact that Donald Trump, at this point, when he sees how deadly COVID-19 is, is even considering herd immunity as a strategy, I mean, it just goes to show you what to expect if he's reelected. This, it's going to stay with us for a long time because he just wants it to wash over the country. Like that original thing that he asked his advisors about, that's a thing. I guess we're back to people hoping that America just grows numb to the COVID-19 deaths in his administration. Like that's what they were saying before. They were reportedly saying, man, I really hope that people just grow numb to all of this because it's making us look pretty bad. We're back to that mentality. We're back to reopen everything. I mean, this is depressing, right? I hate Joe Biden. I know that we're not going to get any change that we need that would stop the rise of another demagogue like Donald Trump, but I don't think he would opt for herd immunity, right? So, I mean, that is something to consider. Four more years of Donald Trump means we're dealing with COVID-19 for the foreseeable future. Until we get an actual vaccine that really works, that's effective, or, you know, we learn that herd immunity is even a possibility that people do have permanent immunity to COVID-19 after they get it. Then you just need a certain amount of people to reach immunity status to get herd immunity. I don't know what the number is in particular because obviously I'm not an epidemiologist or an expert, but it's just we're looking at the worst case scenario if Trump is reelected. And the fact that he's even considering this, the fact that he is not like personally, you know, grief stricken by almost 185,000 Americans dying it shows you he doesn't care about the American people. He wants to reopen the economy because he cares about money and capitalism. That's what this is about. It's not some sort of, you know, thought out strategy to handle COVID-19 quickly. This is about money because we are in a late stage capitalist society. And what matters more than human life, of course, is money and capital and the economy. So if we got to sacrifice thousands more people, possibly millions of people at the altar of capitalism, that's what they're going to do here.